Hello, everybody, and this is Stacy from The Advisor, and today we have a very special guest. I'm very excited to have her on our show. She is a certified holistic wellness coach, and her name is Tracy Desjardins, and she is an amazing coach. She talks about um, eating disorders, and that's just one of the things she does, but today we're going to touch base about eating disorders, how to cope with it, how to get over it, how to get over the hump, and, and to move forward in life, and today Tracy's here to tell us about herself and to tell us great advice on how to cope with an eating disorder. Hi, so Tracy. Yeah, hi. I'm so excited to be here. Thank you for the I'm interest. So have you, you know, tell us a little about yourself and what you do. Yeah. Well, you know, I love that intro because you talked about eating disorders and, you know, I never realized that I actually had one because the one that I battled for so long, wasn't really one that was, was discussed. So we'll, we'll go ahead and get there, but it's really surreal for me to be on your show talking about this because I held all of this in private most of my life. And, mm. um, so I've been in the fitness industry as an instructor and a trainer since 1991. I started in college and now I've moved into the space of health coaching and I work with women who actually are um, challenged by a lot of what challenged me most of my life. And where I found healing solutions for this, I got kind of like productively angry about what exists in the world and where the confusion lies. So I help women heal from chronic dieting. I help them find peace and freedom with food, all food plus their body. And I help them find a sustainable way um, in this relationship with food and body that is not restrictive. It doesn't make them miserable and they can actually then go and take that excess energy and live their lives on purpose. That's awesome. You know, I, I I see so many people in our society struggling with eating disorders. Either they they just don't know how to cope with life. You know, you know, there's so many stresses that go on in everybody's life. We all have obstacles, and a lot of times people, you know, resort to addiction, and they resort to some people resort to alcohol, some people resort to drugs, and some people resort to food. And there are so many people out there when they're in in a, a moment where they're just stressed, and they just, you know, have a lot on their plate. They resort for food as a coping mechanism. And I'm sure you've seen that. And that might've been part of your life. It, I know, I think all of us have at, at one point had used food for comfort. And is that something that you see a lot? And do you have any suggestions for that? Oh, in fact, I specialize in, in that. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I'm sure we'll evolve in our conversation there, but you know, emotional eating is a real thing. It can be very, very confusing. It's, it's not all bad, but it can, it can come with some unwanted easing eating concerns that are very confusing and that the root causes come from a lot of very, very um, powerful places in our lives. So I, I definitely, I spend a lot of work on um, the problem with, with impulsively turning to sugar. Why am yeah. I doing that? Why can't I stop that? A lot of my clients come to me with that, but it's it's a topic that I, I, I always continue to read about. It speaks near and dear to my heart from my own personal private war. And um, honestly, I, this is probably the most fulfilling work that I've ever done because I'm helping women find their own sustainable solutions through this pathway. Um, and uh, where, how I developed my problem with food is pretty interesting. I'd, I'd love to go ahead and dive in if, if you I'd love to. Yeah. Okay. So anyone that's listening in and this topic resonates with you today, um, I encourage you to remember that you have a story and stories are where the inspiration happens. And I'm going to share some of my own story with everybody listening in. And again, Stacey, it's so surreal because what I'm about to say is something I would never <laughs> I would never have thought that I would be sharing with the world. And I do this all the time. Mm -hmm. So um, I was born in 1970. Okay. I just turned 54 last month. Mm -hmm. And I, uh, I, I was one of these kids up until sixth grade where like life was good. I was kind of roly poly. I wore, I wore like plus size clothing because they had a limited selection and I was perfectly happy in my body. I had, I had a big personality. I was the class clown, no problem making friends. I didn't care what my hair looked like. I mean, life was good but before yeah. I turned 12. <laughs> I was always going to break in the rules to make people laugh. And I just, I was confident in myself. That's a, that's a big part here. Okay. And then all of a sudden, well, first of all, like I like to eat. And mm -hmm. I, I liked sweets. Sweets were my thing, but I didn't really think I had a problem with it. I just was, I was a little slightly overweight as a child. Okay. Bring yeah. it. You know? Um, and then I remember entering sixth grade and like the Jordan ass jeans were like all the rage and I was hell bent to fit into these jeans. Everybody was wearing them. And, you know, at 12, 13, you start to notice, you know, okay, boys like that girls, those pretty girls, like people want to be friends with them, all that stuff, you know, it's crazy. Yeah. And that is when I started uh, my first diet. 
that's when this, like, um, I, I would call myself a free spirited child. Um, I was a survivor and I was going to do whatever it took to like fit in and like, you know, okay, this is what we're supposed to do. I'm watching Charlie's angels. I have Barbie dolls more. I don't look like that. I don't look like any of these women. And so I need to do something about it. Now my pretty yeah. plus clothes were not acceptable. My big persona was not acceptable. So I started fighting with food, hard boiled eggs, skim milk, carrots, diet soda. And there's where a problem started. Because mm -hmm. in my quest to change my body, to fit in with society, I was fine as I was. Things would have evolved naturally, right? right? But I bought into all of that stuff and I developed quickly, but nobody really, it wasn't identified back then. I was restricting binging, restricting binging. I remember we had, I, I sang in the choir and we were selling M&Ms, Stacey, like in the little boxes, they were 50 cents a piece. Yeah. I was emptying my piggy bank because I was eating them fat. I wasn't selling them. I was binging on them on the bus on the way home thinking right. what's wrong with me? What is wrong with me? I'm so embarrassed. I just got my hair standing up on my arms, just remembering that. And so I lived like that through middle school. It got bad in high school because the restricting the binging, it just got bad, Stacey. And then my self-esteem was just in the toilet. That was, right. that was hard. I started aerobic aerobics classes. Wasn't very good at sports, but my dad was into fitness and he joined a gym. He's, why don't you come do this class? They're having a lot of fun in there. So I went in and the instructor was this strong woman. Her name was Mary. And Mary didn't smile. She was tough. She blasted the music. I was the youngest person in there. And nobody, nobody really cared. It wasn't like a, a regimented sport. We jumped up and down. We were sweating like maniacs. Everybody was nice. And I felt great when I left. Yeah. So that was actually a saving grace for me because I learned, you know, I feel good when I move my body that way, mm -hmm. but then it kind of turned into a problem because in college I became certified and I started exercising harder to make up for the feeling that I had when yeah. I was watching. So you, you can see anybody listening in, if you've been down that road with restrict binge, you don't know why it must be you. And then we're going to compensate with something. I did laxatives. I was, I, I was over-exercising cardio, cardio, fat-free foods were the, the rage. Um, I, out of the grace of God, Stacy, I have this little gift, this little secret gift, a gift from God. I can't throw up. I'm like a camel. Mm -hmm. It's really hard. Yeah. I try with all due respect to anybody that's, that has battled bulimia, I've got some friends that have been through that. It's, it's, it's horrible. I tried to be that way. There's a problem. I tried to eliminate. I couldn't do it. God mm -hmm. said, no, I'll put you somewhere else. You're going to deal with this for a while. Cause I want you to understand this. And I wasn't anorexic. That didn't resonate with me. It just didn't. That wasn't me, but I knew some girls did. And yeah. I, I admired, I check this out. I admired their self-discipline. What is that? Yeah. What is that? It's psychotic. So got married, had kids. I'm doing Weight Watchers with my friends. I'm fighting these points. I was a master at it. Got to go weight a couple times, binge eating went through the roof. Yeah. So on and on. And I lived like that two decades. I'm working as a trainer. I'm teaching classes. I'm not enough unless I'm real thin. No one's going to respect me. Come to my class. Despite the fact that I taught a good class, it was a blast. Everybody, yeah. all sizes, women, men, we had a good time, but I believed because I wasn't skinny enough, chiseled enough. This is the nineties now. Okay. The yeah. buff men that mm -hmm. wasn't, I don't know. I, I, I never measured up restrict, right. binge, strict binge exercise. It was a form of hell. And I didn't tell anybody about this. I thought I just was weak because nobody talked about emotional eating or binge eating disorder. Nobody talked about that. I just ate yeah. too much. I had nowhere to go. Very ashamed, very secret, especially with my fitness chick ego. Oh, yeah. A lot of us were doing this. None of us were talking about it. We, we all kind of knew something was going on. Yeah. And that's how I lived for a long time. Wow. That's some story. You know, it, it it's a story that just like, it breaks my heart because it's like so many people go through this and so many people are struggling to, to for that ideal figure, you know, they have this figure in their head and a lot of it comes, you know, from either celebrities or social media. And, you know, if you see these people behind the scenes, they don't look like anything they do on screen, 
But, you know, it gives people, you know, the, the perception that, oh, that's the way I'm supposed to look. That's the, that's the norm. That's the way I should look, you know, and the norm is really what makes you comfortable as a person, what you are happy with. You know, when you look in the mirror, you have to be happy with who you see. And as long as you're happy with who you see, that's what really matters. But, you know, when you struggle like that, it must have been it must have been really hard for you because, you know, you we, was it one of it was, you know, you when you because when you were overweight, it seemed like you were happy. You were, you know, like when you were young, you were just eating, you know, you weren't thinking about weight, you weren't thinking about anything, you had your friends and everything, but all of a sudden your hormones kicked in and you started looking around and you started seeing the guys and you probably like, the you know, you see with these girls, all these certain girls were getting, you know, the boys attention and all of a sudden you want to probably be that like that too. You know, and that's when I think that was the same way, you know, and, and I think that's when the, the struggle comes in. Okay. What do I got to do to look like that? And then it's kind of like a, like a desperado that just comes, comes in. You'll, you know, you, you want to go to all lengths to become like those people, you know, cause you want the same attention or affection, you know, and is it because we are followers and not leaders at that point? Is it because we have low self-esteem or is it because, you know, what are we searching for that you think? were searching for because it you know I, I think back in the day I was more of a, of a follower than I was a leader and I definitely didn't have the self-esteem that I have today and I think maybe those two factors play a role too and then we have our our daily issues that we all go through and we all have our high school drama you know the problems that we dealt in high school oh my god you know and same thing happens when we go out and gr grow up but it just becomes bigger and real problems you know like, so for you, you know, what made you, you know, how, what, did you have a low self-esteem? Were you more of a follower than a leader back then? I am so glad you asked that. That's just, a, thank you for asking that question, because I think your listeners can, uh, can think about that question for themselves. If, if they've, um, if they can relate to my story in any way, let's just pause on everybody's behalf here. I'm going to answer yeah. your question. If you remember, I had no problems with self-esteem. I was, life was good. Until yeah. I started writing at 12. I liked who I was. I was confident as the day is long. I even yeah. got, I got in school suspension one time for uncontrollable laughter in the classroom. <laughs> <laughs> I liked me. I was confident in me. And what happened, Stacy, is when I bought into, and I was, I was some reasonably intelligent little girl. I mean, like I bought into something. Yeah. I was fine. I was healthy. I was fine. Okay. My weight, I wasn't in those ridiculous parameters. Okay. I was fine. Yes. I had to fit into Jordache jeans. I didn't have the classic rear end. Yeah. I tried to. And, <laughs> and so it, it had to have been like commercials on TV. You know, boys are jerks in school. You hear things and girls, they, they just want to fit in. They just want acceptance. Oh, yeah. they want to feel like they're attractive. They yeah. want their parents to love them. They want their peers to love them. And the ideal of a thin girl with the perfect rear end for the Jordache jeans was not even realistic for most of us. Exactly. We, so in my chase to then emulate the fitness chick who was worthy of having people come to her class, come on. Yeah. That I became that and my self-esteem got left behind. Mm -hmm. So this is what chronic dieting, and if you're thinking, well, I don't diet, if you're restricting and it's not working, something's off, that's a form of dieting. Well, I don't yeah. diet. Well, if you're doing intermittent fasting and you're not happy and you're going off the rails on the weekend, I'm going to get back on intermittent fasting on Monday. Let me just say that's diet culture. Yes. I see it all the time with clients. So it's time. And I speak, I use my own example where like me talking to you right now, Stace, okay, I rescued my fourth grade little badass. Mm -hmm. This was me in the fourth grade. I went back and gotten her. And now I'm doing shows talking about this to the world with you saying enough is enough. Yeah. And I had all that time and I don't want women to spend as much time. I really believe that God wanted me to go through this. So I understand it at a deep level. Yeah. And he wants me doing everything I can to be on the front line. This is why I wrote my book, The Diet Free Diva where I tell my story, enough is enough. Right. So that's the pathway for women to break the cycle of the restrict and, and, and compensate and all of that and find peace and freedom with food and our bodies. Yeah. There's a way to do that. 
And I, I developed five steps. Why, why the five steps? Because that's what helped me. And I'm just yeah. an girl next door. Let's have a conversation. Tell me about your stories. The first thing I say to my clients, they go on my website and they book a call with me. Tell me all about you. Yeah. Talk, tell me because there's clues, there's data. Yes. hundred percent. Yeah. hundred percent. And everyone has their own reasons for wanting to lose weight or eating, you know, it, everyone has their own reasons. And in today's society, you know, how do you help people when they come to you and they're like, you know, I can't stop eating. I just love food, you know, and, you know, and yeah. they are, you know, at that point where they want to be skinny, but it's like food has taken over their life in a, in a, in a sense. Yeah. Yeah. You know, my, my typical client, is, is this person. Okay. She's not afraid of hard work. She's been working very hard, family success, whatever, a variety of different things. She's not afraid to, to work hard. She bought into this, let's say healthy eating, clean eating, whatever the thing is. And she's buying into, okay, I'm going to take my skills of discipline and I'm going to apply that to food because I want to weigh 10 pounds less or 20 pounds or 30 pounds or whatever. I'm yes. going to apply my self-discipline. When I do steps one through whatever, I'm going to achieve this result. So then they implement their, their sense of tenacity and purpose with food. Yeah. They wonder why they're tripping up on the weekends, binging, going overboard. They wonder why can't I control this? Like I control all the other things in my life. Yeah. A typical person that comes to me, it's not the only female, but most of the women are believing that they need to just get back on the horse again on Monday and mm -hmm. keep pushing with the same restrictions. And I say, hang on, let's mm -hmm. have a different conversation because let's look at what's worked and what hasn't worked. Do yes. you really start over again on Monday? I live like that. I talk about that in my book. Do you, were you really put on this earth, earth to start over on Monday? Isn't mm -hmm. there, can we get past this and, and live the life that we were meant to live? So there's really a sticking point with, we are told how to eat, what to eat. And if we stay on that path without veering off, we're going to get a result and then everything gets great. And that doesn't happen. It yeah. doesn't work that way. Right. You know, life is not black and white. So why would we expect as an eater to have yeah. a relationship? with food that's supposed to bring us comfort and joy and, and soothing and pleasure. It's supposed to do that. Yeah. Right? We're created to want to eat and then to pr reproduce, frankly. So right. if we try to fight our biology and mother nature and our appetite, we're barking up the wrong tree. So I help women find the right solution for them. I help them. I call it a path of excellence with habits, including food. Let's figure out what might work for you. I open a door for my clients. I lead them. I help them connect, connect their own dots. I don't, I don't do food plans. I'm not qualified to do food plans, right. but we do discuss food and I ask them questions. What do you think? What are you noticing when you eat A, B, C, and D? How yeah. about this thing called intuition and mm -hmm. becoming a conscious eater? Right. Then, then we're aware. Then we're tuning into ourselves, not listening to, well, you got to start intermittent fasting. Everybody's doing it. Yeah. I, I like that. I, I like that you you help people figure out the, the 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 way that they need to do it, and that they don't have to have a, a rigorous food plan that they have to be glued to. Because you know, so many people have said that you can eat healthy, enjoy yourself, and still lose weight and still be healthy. That you don't have to like subject yourself to this specific diet because that's where people mostly fail. Is that you, when you tell someone you can only do X, Y, and Z, and you have to do it at this time and this time and this time, and you can't eat past this time, then and people feel like they're being pressured and they feel like they're being limited. And I think that's when the failure itself falls in too, is that, you know, people want to be who they are. People want to do what makes them happy. And when you put, a, you know, a diet in front of them, then, you know, and, it, and you make this strict regimen, I think yeah. people are likely to fail because they can only stick with it for so long. And then a lot of people fall off the wagon is yeah. what I've seen. What do you think? Totally. You just completely nailed it. I mean, you know, the diet industry, I think the failure rates up to like 98%. Now don't quote me on that, but I read that. Wow. And that is, I read this too. I wish I could say I made this up, but that is the only business model, the diet industry, diet and weight loss industry that um, 
create something, the customers fail and it's the customer's fault. Yeah. Right. I mean, it's, it's insane. When, when we say yes to the form of harsh, restrictive eating mm -hmm. and whatever flavor that is, whatever form of that it, it is, yeah, and we feel that sense of it's me, myself, and I'm going to eat this way. It's going to, I'm going to lose the weight. Everything's going to be great. I'll figure out how to keep it off later. But for now I'm doing this. It's like we put ourselves in timeout. I'm pointing to the corner in my office here. We go sit in that chair and we duct tape our mouth. Mm. Eventually eventually a younger part of us, or maybe even like just another part of us is going to stand yeah. up, rip the duct tape off when we have a bite of a cookie or whatever we eat. That's not part of what we should have been doing. Then yeah. it's like the kid, the kid is out of the chair screaming and yelling and running amok through Toys R Us or Candyland or wherever we just, we want to have some fun and we'll start yeah. over Monday. So why, why do we keep doing it? Because there's a humongous profit driven venture in in the industry it's money 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 if yeah. think of it this way friends listening in if you if you can even estimate how much money you've spent on supplements products plans cookbooks trackers um meetings whatever you name it yeah um, we could all we could have beach houses i mean it, it if you really think about that 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 actually makes me really really angry as well and mm -hmm. um I think it's time to say enough is enough. Yeah. Consider I was born with my own answers. I was right. born knowing how to eat. Let's use my example. I had no problem with my appetite until sixth grade. I was fine. Mm -hmm. I was going through the prepubescent stuff that a lot of kids go through. My son, my kids went through that. Yeah, they get through it. But, but like, I was okay. I trusted my appetite. I right. trusted my own. Do I want another cookie or not? Sometimes I did. Sometimes I didn't. I became afraid of cookies. I'm eating the whole box of M&Ms that I have to sell for chorus. Something caused that. It's not yeah. who I am. There was a root cause. It's called Tracy sitting in timeout and she's upset. She's not happy. Mm -hmm. Duct tape comes off. Where are those M&Ms? I'm going to try again later, but now for now, I just need to eat this. Right. It's insanity. There is a better way. And that is what I help women with. And what are some of the better ways of, of dealing with, you know, your food issues? Yeah. Okay. Well, again, in my book here, Diet Free Diva. Okay. I'm just going to take a second. This is on Amazon, by the way. It's also on my website, theholisticdivas.com. It's right there on the front page. I talk about five steps. This is my easiest way to answer this because there's a, I could talk for an hour about that. Your question. Mm -hmm. Five steps to find peace and freedom with food body and yourself on your own trusted and sustainable terms. That's the diet free diva. This is what I talk about. Step one. And I already explained this discover and write your own food story. Let's talk about you, Stacy. Let's talk about you. Tell me about you. What do you remember in your relationship with food? Let's go back. What did you eat for lunch? What was in your lunchbox as a child? You know, little, little things like that. We have a wonderful conversation there. Mm -hmm. Step two, we have to get to know who we are. Notice we're not talking about food yet. We talked about story. We yeah. have to start to go inward and discover who we are intimately. We talk yeah. about values. What's important to you? What? It's hard to discover our top three values. I help clients go through that because we need to align our decisions with life, including food, with what's important to us, not what's important to the diet, but what's important to us. There's a lot of work. It's fun discovering values. And then the third step we talk about the power of what goes on in our thoughts. And yeah. that is where, that's where the stickiness really exists that a lot of women don't even know. We talk about two voices within. We have an inner bully. We have an inner committee that's assessing everything we eat, everything we do, that oftentimes tells us we're not good enough. We're not doing enough. We are enough. But when we're failing at diets for years, Stacey, like what I said, we yeah. believe that we're not we're not capable of doing anything enough. It right. does enough on our self-esteem. So we look at that and we start to elevate the voice into what I call an inner nurturing coach voice, becoming your own coach. That's really important. Still haven't talked about food yet, right? Step right. four, step four, we talk about, let's go back to basics with food. We were born with a natural preference for foods that are mostly unprocessed, that yes. come from nature that haven't been been infused with chemicals and 
GMOs and all this, all this stuff. We talk about doing a whole foods cleanup. That's not a diet, but it's how we get back to basics with food. And that there's a discovery period going on there. Step yeah. five, we talk about ways to navigate and survive in this tempting foodie society. I call it a toolbox of treasure mm -hmm. where yeah. this is how you survive when you're out and about living your life and you're tempted with all of these foods. We talk about emotional eating in there. We talk about not dieting and experimenting. We're in the classroom of life. We're getting a PhD in self. Mm -hmm. This is the pathway, which we, we talk about exercise, moving our body. What makes sense here? I'm a fitness pro and I talk about what do you like to do? Let's have a yeah. discussion. Let's talk about that. So I help women program a pathway for them that makes sense for them. Self-care. Um, I have a brand new mini course coming out of all about self-nourishment. So doesn't it make sense to quiet the noise on the restrictions? We don't want to sit in the corner anymore and learn to take care of ourselves. And if we yeah. have any unwanted or unnecessary pounds on our body right now, guess what happens when we focus on not weighing ourselves and taking care of ourselves? Yes. Un unnecessary excess is going to go about its merry way when we're relaxed and calm and thinking about, am I taking best care of myself in this right. situation? We talk about personal inquiry, asking ourselves question like a nurturing coach, all of that. All of that is a segue to having peace and freedom with food. And believe me, if somebody like me who is at war, at binge eating disorder, if somebody like me can come out on the other side and not be afraid of food, never start over on Monday and trust that I can eat a brownie without flipping out. Anybody can do that. And it's great. Right. And it's fun. This is fun work. It really right. is. No, it's, it sounds amazing. And I, I love the fact that you're, you're not so focused on, you know, every little thing we put in our mouths and, and, and we're focused on just enjoying life. And, and if you look, there's so many women, including myself who, who suffer from high cortisol levels and that throws your chemistry and your weight and everything else off the, off the charts, you know, and, and it's all because of how we're mentally and physically taking care of ourselves. And we really, I like the fact that you, you know, you tell people to be able to have a good mindset, you know, and to be able to follow your intuition and, you know, and just that self-love and self-care, which I, you know, that kind of intertwines with the mindset is, you know, because if you have, if you're giving yourself self-love, you're, you know, that's the, you're going to put all these things above, you know, and you're going to take care of yourself because you're naturally, you know how to love yourself. And so you know what you need to do for yourself, where most people in society are, you feel guilty to, to exemplify self-love and self-care to themselves because they feel like they have to please everyone else before they please themselves. Can I dive in on the self-love thing? Oh, sure. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I have to tell you, Stacy. okay. And for, for women that are listening in, if you have a desire, like Tracy, I get what you're saying. I have a great time listening to this episode here, but like, I want to lose weight. Like I, I want to lose weight. I want everyone to know. I get that. There's nothing wrong with wanting to lose weight. Don't let anybody tell you, well, you shouldn't feel like that. You know, it's, it, if you want to lose weight, you want to lose weight. Yeah. Yes. Can we put that desire and that preference to weigh less? Can we put that over here? Let's just mm -hmm. put it over here. I'm not saying, I'm not trying to convince anybody to accept the extra weight. We're not talking about that. But I will mm -hmm. say, I will say that there was a time in my life when I was heavier. And if somebody, and I remember this happening, Tracy, love yourself now. I'm flipping tables. Mm -hmm. What do you mean, love myself now? I don't feel good in my body. I don't feel good about myself. And I don't like what I'm doing with food behind closed doors. So when you're telling me to love myself, help me out with this. And I'd like to speak to that because a lot of women are like flipping tables over this concept of self-love. Let's make this really super simple. Yeah. The way forward, if weight loss is, is meant to happen, it's going to happen in a relaxation response. It's going mm -hmm. to happen when we start to calm down and relinquish the, the white knuckling grip and control on the steering wheel of our own lives and our relationship with food. When we let go of that and we try to accept ourselves as is right now. We have to step into the zone of, I might not like what I weigh. 
I might not like how I feel or what my secrets are with food, but I can accept that for today. I can accept it for now. We have to, because that will help us bring in the relaxation. And it will also help us do something called, what are a couple of things that you can do right now that make you feel good in your body as is right now. We talk about gratitude. We've heard about that, right? It's really important gratitude shower. And there's also this little thing like something I did. Okay. That was really helpful. I took all the clothes that were digging into my stomach, anything that was like too tight. I donated all of that to Goodwill and I went and I bought some clothes that fit me now that make me feel attractive and comfortable right now. That is an example of, of, of acceptance and calming down the judgment, the criticism and accepting who we are right now in the name of self-love. Can we accept, show some compassion? Let's talk about your food story. Okay, you heard some of my story. I've got more, okay? But when I learned to meet myself with compassion, well, Tracy, of course we were eating all those M&Ms. Damn it. I mean, we we're, were eating tuna and hard-boiled eggs in the seventh grade. Of course right. we went off the rails. There's an, there's an adult version of us that's speaking to the troubled version of us, often a younger yeah. version, and mm-hmm. there's a lot of that, but we have to accept what is now with compassion. We don't have to yeah. like it. We don't have to, we don't have to say, well, I'm never going to be able to do this weight. No, let's just recognize where we've come from with some compassion. Yeah. Let's just sit with this for now. I promise when we calm the waters right. about taking care of ourselves, that is the way that we settle into a sustainable pathway that can lead us to where our weight is happy. Where, yeah. what, what's sustainable for us? I also intentionally, when I go to the doctors, just happened last month. Sorry, I'm going to skip the scale. I don't get on the scale. Oh, okay. Yeah. Can you estimate your weight? Sure. Mm-hmm. People, what? You can do that. You don't have to get on the scale. I don't. Because in my mind, a long time ago, I've got scale trauma. Tracy don't weigh 130. Yeah. Don't weigh 130. Don't tell me 5'4". I, I don't weigh 130. I'm right. not getting off the damn thing. I weigh more than that. Mm-hmm. That, that it does it, I, I don't want to be tripped up into diet culture again. These exactly. resources were available. These are the conversations I have with amazing women. Yeah. It's different than dieting, Stacey. You get what I'm saying? Like it's different. Oh, it's different. Yeah, no, it's different than dieting. Cause when dieting, you're all you do is focus, 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 focus on what you're eating and, you know, and it, it's so stressful. And then you get on, you know, I had know so many people and I have to be, I'm a victim of it too. You get on the, on the scale and you're constantly weighing yourself. One day you're off, one day you're on, one day you're three pounds more, one day you're two pounds less. And you know, it, you're, you're taking it to heart and it's frustrating. You're like, wow, I'm being so good. And most of the time I'm doing this and I'm doing this and I barely eat this and I just don't get it, you know? And, you know, you hear that a lot too, from women going through menopause too. You know, that's a big issue too. It was like, once I started going through menopause, that was like these hips and this little stomach and everything around it started coming. And I'm like all at once. And I was like, whoa, you know, and it's like, I think for the past 10 years, I've been trying to lose 10 pounds and I'm still at the same weight that I am. (laughs) I get it. Like it's ludicrous, right? (laughs) <laughs> oh, totally. totally. Could hang out. We, we could hang out. We could have like a girl's night together. Yeah. You know, can I, can I say something funny? I'll, sure. I'll keep it brief. There was a time I'm doing Weight Watchers, right? Me and my best friend, we're head to head. You know, one of us is having a good day. One of us is having a bad day. Well, I worked real hard one week. I mean, I was pushing the exercise. I'm choking down the celery. I'm eating the, the soup, <laughs> whatever. I, I'm miserable. And I'm excited for weigh-in day. And I'm damn near naked going in for my way in because everything, you know, nothing, I got to weigh in. Yeah, my, yeah. Everything about me was hinging on what that number was going to be. So mm-hmm. I go in, I go in this lovely older lady. I forget her name. I saw her every Friday. I, back in the day when you wrote in the tracker, the sliding thing, I hand mm-hmm. her my tracker. She was going to record. I get on the scale. I'm ready. And I gained two pounds. This is where <laughs> this thing makes us crazy. I'm a nice person, but I wasn't nice. She, yeah. she up the scale. Oh, she writes, oh, honey, did you have a bad week? I said, no, I had a great week. Give me back my tracker. So I yeah. ripped out her hands. I felt I, I was I was furious. I scared her. I probably needed to go to the bathroom or I was getting my period. Something, yeah. you know, um, I went and sat down. I have a bad attitude. I left and I went to the Pizza Hut buffet and went <laughs> haywire. 
Does yeah. any make any sense? But I know you're you're listening, honey. It's somebody is probably resonating with this type. Oh, of- yeah, I'm resonating. <laughs> I'm like, screw this. I, I give up. I tried everything. Yeah, you screw it. I'm going to eat what I want to eat. I'm going to enjoy myself. I want a pizza. I'm going to eat the whole freaking pizza, you know, and I get it. I get it. Definitely. Now, women that that end their work with me, I get emails back from them, from them saying, Tracy, I had just a couple slices of the pizza and I was truly satisfied. I can't believe I used to eat the entire thing. Right. That makes me smile. Yeah. That's freedom. I wanted right. to be that person. I wanted to be able to have just a little sliver of birthday cake, maybe eat the whole thing, but but not be conniving on how I can get more behind everybody's back. Exactly. So, you know, they, it requires a different approach. And I, I talk about this as doing something different. We need yeah. to do something different. And the different is the space that I work in. And I believe that the, the different, doing something different, these five steps, mm-hmm. pathway where we can say, enough nonsense with any, any restrictive form of, of dieting for weight loss. Okay. Now if if your health concerns with certain restrictions, that's a whole different animal. Okay. Uh, but in terms of women wanting to wanting to love who they are and show up in grace as their, I I call it their inner queen. We want to show around a lot number of years. We, we have, um, it's like a rite of passage now to show up. We're showing up confident grace. We're not obsessing about food. And we believe that we truly are good enough to do whatever it is that we're doing. Right. So it's a healing. Yeah. Yeah. I love that. I love that because I feel so many people inside have so many scars and they're just like beat up inside, you know, and, you know, it's just, it's like a battle. It's a battle between themselves and, and, you know, they, they want to, they want to feel good. They want to look good. They have a, you know, we all have that, that, kind of like image that we want want ourselves to be. And I think everyone fights with that. And, and that's why, like I was telling you earlier, sometimes I get mad at social media because for the longest time, they just, they made women much too thinner than what they were supposed to be. And yeah. now they're yeah. making women, you know, the models, you know, that they shouldn't be obese. They should be normal, healthy weight women, you know, and that should be the example of what a healthy weight woman looks like. Because when you look at someone that's too thin, they're doing damage to themselves. They're either bulimic, they're not eating, they're starving themselves to, you know, to be extra thin. So, cause they're models and they're modeling these clothes and that's what they're supposed to do. And that was back in the day when we were young. And now you see women who are obese and have eating disorders and they're modeling clothes and they're giving the message, it's okay to be big. And it's, I, I, you know, I don't judge people. I, you know, it's always what's in the inside it, it matters. But then I, on a health perspective, I'm thinking high cholesterol, heart disease i'm thinking diabetes i'm thinking all these different things that there can be susceptible if someone overeats and not take care care of their body so you know it, it's having that healthy happy medium and it's teaching people how to yeah. just do it and be happy but do it in a healthy way where it's not going to affect your health and you're going to feel good about yourself oh totally stacy and if you think of the extremes the super thin model mm-hmm and then the woman that is very, very obese. Mm-hmm. From a health perspective, there's concerns on both ends of those spectrums. Okay, now yes. I am a doctor, a therapist. I'm not a specialist in any of those extremes. I just right. want to say that in that spectrum, there's this thing, there's this concept out there. And I think it's interesting. I'm just going to say that it's interesting. And I encourage everyone to consider it, the health at every size movement. Mm-hmm. There's a lot of good stuff in that. And what I mean by that is that's why I don't get on the scale because I was always told I need to lose weight. I'm off of this, but I'm not built my BMI yeah. was overweight. I am yeah. like massively healthy. Yeah. So there, there's some, there's some craziness and I know some real athletic, healthy women that are not in those parameters and their BMI is up. You look at Serena Williams. Ooh, strong. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Healthy. Love that inspiring yes and i think that there's conversation around that like what is healthy and i help my clients like well, what's healthy it's healthy to you how do you want to feel in your body yes how do you feel I, I actually don't get women that like want to get skinny because we're over it like the women yeah. know that they don't want to get skinny like we see through that they want to yeah. feel good in their body and they want to know how to do that without yeah. what they hear without what they see the celebrities, you know, doing on TV, you know, you know, one of the things that irritates me the most, Stacey, social media, I can't stand it. I know I have to be on it as a, to grow yeah. the 
Uh, but like it, I can only handle it for so long. Yeah, me too. Like me, honest people like you and I trying to do our thing, we can get crowded out by the women. Like I'm 54. If I see one more woman like my age, like here's me, like selfie in the gym. Like we don't want to see that. Like we yeah. laugh that. Like it ain't working, ladies. We <laughs> want real conversations like this. Well, what was yeah. in your box in the in the in the fourth grade? I mean, let's talk about high school Jordash jeans. Let's talk about real stuff that matters, like your yeah. story, like where you're at now. How do you want to feel in your body? What does that look like to you? What's important to you? Let's work right. on you. What about you? And mm -hmm. I, I I think that there, I do believe that we're we're in a turning point here where like women like you and I, and many, many others, like we've had enough of that. Yeah. We're starting to get tired. We're starting to stand up and be like, tell, tell me something else here. Right. Something else. I know there's got to be a better way. And there is. No, there definitely is. And I like your way. I like your way of just, you know, giving yourself self-love and being able to just focus on being happy and being able to not constrict yourself. And then the whole week you're, you're good. And then on the weekends you go haywire because you restricted yourself during the whole week. And then everything that you fought for during the week just went to kaputs because now during the, during the weekend, you know, you, you've been to restaurants, you've eaten food with tons of butter, you know, and, you know, if you had a drink or two, you know, all the sugar in the drink, you know, you're back to square one. And it's going to take probably about three days. Once you get to our age, it takes about three days to get back to your normal weight after you had a weekend of fun, you know? So hey. it's like, you know, it's, it's an endless cycle. And, and, and when you ovulate and menstruate and you ovulate and menstruate, that's another problem too, because you fluctuate. So, you know, and your cravings, you know, so it's an endless battle and it's really about just being happy with yourself and giving yourself, I think, you know, normal limitations, like, in, and when I say normal limitations, it's just living to be happy and, you know, feeling good and looking in the mirror and saying, do I like myself? And if you don't like yourself, make some healthy changes, but don't go overboard where you, you, you know, you really put so much stress on yourself. So, you know, cause when you do that, I think you, you put yourself in a situation where you're, 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 you're bound to fail because when we, when we go on those crazy diets, cause it's always a new crazy trend that everybody has to try, you know, and you know, there there's trends and they don't work, but everybody's trying it. And, you know, and like you said, 98% of diets fail. So, you know what? It's like these diet, it's not about dieting. It's about eating healthy, being happy, and also stress, stress kills, you know, and that cortisol level itself can put on weight and pack on the pounds itself, dealing with that stress and, and being able, and that self-care and that self-love, like you said, will help reduce that cortisol level, will help reduce your stress too. One, now that you mentioned stress, I, I do want to mention uh, one more thing here is that um, I, one of the big pain points for my clients are stress eating, stress, emotional eating. Yeah. Uh, it's like what happens to me in that moment where I can't, I feel, you know, we feel a craving coming on, we feel it, right? Something's going yeah. on and we want to, we want to go to the vending machine or whatever your vice might be. How do we yeah. stay above the water when we feel the cortisol? Life is stressful. Let's face it. We all have flavorful lives and I don't know yeah. anybody that doesn't have stress. Yeah. Okay. Anybody, I myself included, I deal with it all the time. It's just life, life on life's terms. It's fantastic. But how, mm -hmm. Tracy, how do I stay in the now and stay true to my healthy habits? Let's say to not turn to the candy bars at 3 p.m. or not go home after work later and go off the rails when everybody goes to sleep, all of that. And I did a lot of thinking on that. Like, Tracy, what helped me? get past that because that I really struggled with the stress eating. And I got on the other side of that. I wanted to create something that made sense, that was simple, that was doable, that really provided a solution to people, women, but like anybody, my, my husband taps into this, um, this um, emotional eating rescue, stress eating rescue. So I created my own voice, very proud of this, an emotional eating rescue audio that also can be used for stress eating. Download it, you tap into it, you listen to me, for 10 minutes and I help you ride that wave. I ask you certain things. I help you breathe to get mm -hmm. over that period to help you discern and discover what do I really need right now? Cause it's not the candy. Right. If you choose the candy, you choose the candy because we're not trying to be perfect anymore. It's going to yeah. happen. 
There are times yeah. when I go for the chocolate. I'm not going to, and I'm fine with that now, but I don't, yeah. apologize. I don't beat myself up over it, but we need a way to stay present, stay grounded, stay centered, stay sane. So we can remember and tune in yeah. what's going on. What do I really need? Okay. Well, this is what I'm feeling. This is the emotion. None of us learned how to do that growing up. Most of that's another thing. Mm -hmm. Feelings and emotions. Well, we should ignore those. We need to just press on because yes. we're successful. There's a rub there. Those of us that didn't learn that skill set, we got to relearn it. And yeah. this is one way to do it. We have to get present, identify how we're feeling, what we need to stay out of the camp of using food to cope, numb, medicate. It can be done, but we have got to tap into this. This is the yeah. only thing because you're not going to want to, you're not going to want, okay, what's vegan when you're losing it? You don't care yeah. anymore. Or what's this or what's that? There, so there, there is a strategy for this. The, my emotional eating rescue audio, it's on my website. And it's also, I think in, in your show notes, I think I shared that with you, that link where you can yes. go and get that and, and use it anytime. I'd be honored by anybody that wants to listen to me, help you stay out of the jungle and to stay. When I say in control, I mean, stay aware. Yes. Stay aware of what's going on. And it's usually you've got to get through this. You do need something. I help you figure out what it is that you need by just listening and breathing. Yeah. So, yeah. That's so important. That's so important. And if you had to take today, everything we talked about, what are some important things you'd like to emphasize to the listeners? Yeah. You know, I, I think, I think the biggest thing, two things, number one, and we talked about this, I think one of the most powerful things we talked about in today's interview and I dove in when you talked about self-love, right? Before self-love, self-acceptance and self-compassion with what is right now. Ladies, yes. I don't like my menopause belly right now either. I don't like it either, but it doesn't mean that anything in my life has to be put on hold. And I say the same for all women out there. Like, how can we accept ourselves now? I'm wearing pants that are comfortable. This top's big and loose. My bra's not tight. <laughs> compassion Com of course I used to binge on all that stuff where can you find compassion and acceptance right now let's get rid of the critic let's get rid of the judgment and the criticism the second thing the second thing is and I know this is tough and this is the I help I help my clients through this how can you begin on a day-to-day -day basis one day at a time starting to tap into your intuition mm-hmm how can I take best care of myself right today? For, for example, like right now we're on this interview. I'm hungry. Mm -hmm. Time for lunch. It's an hour past my lunchtime. So I'm hungry. Yeah. I'm hungry. I'm going to go eat after this. Right. And then I'm going to take a break because I've been go, go, go on my computer all day long. So intuition to help you learn to attune to your real needs. That is the antidote for battling with food. Yes is to learn to attune with your intuition, discover what those messages inside are giving you. What are the messages? I'm hungry, it's time for lunch. My face yeah. is getting hot, we've been talking a long time, I need a break. Mm -hmm. What about you? You know what I mean? Like all this, this concept of what about you and to start to just trust your intuition because we have our own answers for everything. Yes. But it takes time to trust that again. It does, yeah. 100%. I love it. I love it. Now tell everybody where they can find your website again. Tell them your name and your website. Okay. So it's the holistic divas, the holistic divas.com. Uh, on, on that page, you'll see a link to purchase my book. I have a free downloadable workbook to help you work through the five steps to find peace and freedom with food. I have a section where you can get free resources, freebies. I had a section where you can reach out and book a call with me and tell me your story, meet you one-on-one -on -one, face to face. And I, I also I also have a, a link where um I've got some courses that are coming out this month, actually, that I'm really, really excited about and all kinds of juicy. My my social media links, all of that are, are up there as well. So the holistic divas.com and that emotional eating rescue audio that I mentioned is in the show notes here. I think as well as my website too, Stacey, in your show notes. And it's also all that's on my website. Thank awesome. you. Thank you for asking. Uh and can and also, can you find your book on Amazon and, and places like yeah. that? Yeah, it's on Amazon. I also recorded it in my own voice on Audible because nobody likes those robots, you know? So I, I read it in my own voice and that's available. The Diet-Free Diva, it's on Amazon, paperback, Kindle, and uh, in Audible. 
So it's on the links on my website. It's also on Amazon. Awesome. My God, this has been amazing, Tracy. Thank you so much for coming on the show. This is, you know, I, I'm so I'm so glad you came on and you brought up this topic because I think this is something that women of all ages battle with. And, you know, it, it, like you said, it comes from loving yourself, acceptance, you know, that's the first thing, you know, and, you know, we don't have to, you know, I say, don't compare yourself to the people next to you. Just it's, it's all about how you feel about yourself, you know, because, you know, everybody has a different road, a different pathway. Everybody has been through different things and you can't compare yourself and you know sometimes a person might have the perfect body but they might have also a horrible you know life behind them you don't know what goes on behind closed doors and you know don't don't beat yourself up because you 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 look at some of these pictures of other people and you don't have what you think you they you know they have and, and you want it you know be happy with who you are, you know, you, everybody's structure is different. We're all different, you know, and we can't, we can't have expectations of trying to look like, you know, a 110, you know, pound model. It's not happening with my chicken thighs. I'm not, you know, I'm not six foot. I'm not five eleven. I'm not five foot 10. It's not happening. It's not, not, not happening in this life. And you just got to accept it, you know, and work with what you have and just love yourself and take care of yourself and work through your problems in a healthy and respective manner. And if you have problems coping and you want to go for food, go to someone like Tracy, where, you know, you could have, you know, the guidance and have this, learn the tools and different strategies like Tracy has gone over today to get you through the hump. Because, you know, the worst thing you can do is, is let food control you. You have control of yourself, you know, and you just need, sometimes we all need a little help. We all need coaches. We all need people and support, you know, to guide us through through the rough patches but once we learn it and we use it and we utilize it and we put it into our lifestyle it becomes natural and it just becomes you know you don't even realize you're doing it and you're, you're using the strategies that you learn you're using the tools you learn and you don't even recognize it it just becomes a part of you naturally and those are the things that save you and, and make you happy because life is just being happy healthy and productive and that's all what it's all about and I love so, your show, Stacey. I'm so honored to be on your show, you know, about personal growth and well-being and all the topics that you have uh, on your on your podcast. I was checking those out. I'm really honored to be part of that lineup. And I, I really admire the work that you're doing uh, with your show in the world. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. And thank you for coming on the show. And I hope to talk to you soon. Thank you for having me. Oh, you're welcome. You have a great day. You too.